presented by the Earth Space Agency and paid for by viewers like you. 1960 to 2060, a hundred years in space flight. In a decade of hope and fear, in an age of both knowledge and ignorance, the greater our knowledge increases, the greater our ignorance unfolds. The vast stretches of the unknown and the unanswered and the unfinished still far outstrip our collective comprehension. April 21st, 1961. Russian pilot Yuri Gagarin became the first person to journey to space when he completed an orbit of Earth in his ship, the Vostok. Now look into space, to the moon and to the planets beyond. And we have vowed that we shall not see it governed by a hostile flag of conquest, but by a banner of freedom. Yet the vows of this nation can only be fulfilled if we in this nation are first, and therefore we intend to be first. And the United States was first to the moon, a space race like none other before or since. People across the country were captivated by what Americans could do, by the progress Americans could make. We almost glibly toss that line away now, man on the moon, but by golly, just think it over. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for man. There it is, a U.S. flag on the surface of the moon. Well, for thousands of years now, it's been man's dream to walk on the moon. Right now, after seeing it happen, knowing that it happened, it still seems like a dream. And now that that dream had been realized, people began to collectively lose interest in space travel. It was no longer a sign of nationalistic pride. The United States no longer needed to beat the Russians to space. 1972. The last Apollo mission to the moon and the last time any human went beyond low Earth orbit. Times changed. Funding waned. Plans for more manned missions became plans for robotic missions. And many more plans were scrapped. The International Space Station, placed in low Earth orbit, was constructed in 1998. The last real human outpost in space. Robotic missions to Mars and the outer solar system became the only recourse for space exploration. During the height of the space race in the 1960s, NASA was receiving up to 4.5% of the total federal budget. By 2012, they were receiving less than 1%. For the next 20 years, space research went unnoticed. Physicists refined calculations for ships that could take humanity beyond Earth. Plans were drawn, but the funding to put those plans into action never came. By 2042, people were finally ready to try once again. The Icarus Initiative, much like the Apollo program of the 1960s and 70s, sought to take humanity beyond Earth. But things did not go as planned. A catastrophic accident aboard the Icarus 4 space shuttle caused the destruction of the ship and loss of all six crew people. By 2048, the United States government officially pulled the plug on what was left of NASA. Many of its best and brightest formed a new organization called the Earth Space Agency, pulling elite members from foreign space programs as well. This new agency was a public company, traded on the world economy. Their goal was to reinvigorate public interest in space travel and to show that solutions to the problems we have on Earth can be found amongst the stars. Their mission? To launch Earth's first faster-than-light starship is called Project Discovery.